welcome to Bar Music Showcase. I'm Bar Cisneros. Welcome back to another video. And it's been a long time, but it's now finally time to bring back the CD Hall series. And for those who are new, this is just a series where at the end of a month, I go through all the CDs that I bought and I kind of give my first impressions on pretty much most of them. So, yep, today we're doing August, the quite a good return because in July I didn't buy anything. And so when August hit, I was like, yep, time to go all in. Um, so I did a community post and I asked the question, how many CDs do you think I bought this month? And a couple people answered the question and one person got it exactly right. Um, Ironically, it's this person who made it so. So, in total, I have bought 43 alb uh, album, yeah, albums, I'll say. And Mickey got it exactly right. And like I said before, ironically, it's because of him, it's 43. Because he was the one who uh, gave me some CDs that you saw in the previous video. Uh, go check that video out if you haven't already. Again, thank you, to, thank you to Mickey. So, without further ado, I'm just gonna get started. So if you love this series, please give the video a like. And if you're new, please subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, you know the drill. All right, so um, this first section is gonna be CDs that you've already seen probably because either I've shown them in previous videos, whether it was a record store find video or an unboxing video. But the first one I'm gonna go through are the ones that I just recently got. And again, thank you, Mickey, for these 11 CDs. Um, so, and by the way, um, for these ones, I did, I'm not gonna give my first impressions on them yet because I have not had time to listen to them because I got them, like I said, I got them yesterday. So I didn't have, so I didn't get the chance to listen to them. Uh, but just to recap, here's what Mickey got me. We have Beatles for Sale, of course, by the Beatles. We have Breaking It Up on the Beatles Tour by Jackie D. Shannon. We have a couple live albums from Deep Purple. We have Live at the California Jam. Then we have Nobody's Perfect. We have Yes, Big Generator. And we have a few, quite a bit of Paul Simon. We have One Trick Pony, Hearts and Bones. Uh, this is supposed to be first. Uh, songs from the C Cape Man. I realized I said Chapman in the last video, so had to fix that. And then last one is Paul Simon, You're the One. He also got me Rhythm of the Saints, but I already have it, already had it, so I didn't include it in the haul. So that was the ones Mickey got me. So. Very nice, good selection there, and I will listen to them at some point. All right, so now, <clears throat> excuse me, from here on out, these are ones that I did get a chance to listen to, and I will give my first impressions. Um, we're still in the section where I, you have, before, you've already seen them in previous videos, so. First up, I did unbox this. We have the Birds original albums, original album classics, and this is volume two, which has a lot of the later period. I am kind of disappointed it doesn't include on the untitled album but since that's a double album i can kind of understand why still would have been nice uh, but they still include uh, a good chunk of the later period so again i've mentioned this before but i am doing a i doing a series with nick townsend 909 that's the name of the channel and we've been going through all the birds albums and just reviewing them um and I pretty much got this because Nick has the this exact same pack, this box set. So I wanted to get as well, just an easy way to get th these albums here. Um, so here's what it includes. It includes uh, Sweetheart of the Rodeo. Again, I won't give my full in-depth thoughts because go check that series out. I have a playlist on my channel, but a uh, uh, decent album. Again, a bit too country, but there's some good songs on here. Um, you Ain't Going Nowhere, I'm a Pilgrim, um, The Christian Life, um, Hickory Winds, probably my favorite song. Yeah, it's a solid album. If you love country rock, um, then you, you might enjoy this one. And, pretty, and from what I've heard, this is pretty influential in the country rock genre. So worth noting. 
Okay, next up we have Dr. Birds and Mr. Hyde. Kind of an odd cover, I must say. Um, kind of a weird fusion of country rock and psychedelic rock. Um, it's kind of interesting. It's a pretty decent album again. Um, I will say Clarence White is the true MVP on this album. Um, this Wheels on Fire is great. Great opening track. Um, Your Gentle Way of Loving Me. Uh, trucks, uh, drugstore Truck Driving Man. Um, of course, I will say has some of the definitely has a lot of weak stuff on here, especially the last track, which is a medley. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a decent album, but is it essential? Maybe not. Now here's one I was very surprised when I might I I will even say this is probably one of the most underrated albums. We have um, Ballad of Easy Rider. The title track alone is worth is worth mentioning because I love the title track to this song to this album. Uh, Fido's pretty good. Um, Tesla County Blue um, has the <coughs> excuse me has in has a version of Jesus is just all right, which I knew previously from the Doobie Brothers, and kind of nice to hear one that predates that. Um, Gunga Din, um, which is a Gene Parsons song, which is I actually quite like. Um, but yeah, very good album. I quite liked it. <laughs> and then, and then after that would be the untitled album. But again, it didn't include it. But it does include Bird Maniacs, probably as of now at least their their weakest album by far. A lot of weak stuff on here. And this one's a little bit better. We have farther along, um, but still some weak stuff here and there. So the later Birds periods has has some weak stuff but you know there's some hidden gems in that period so i think it's we're, i think it's worth exploring and yeah and i'd say this is probably like i said this is probably the best way to get a lot of these albums you probably have to get gonna you're gonna have to get the untitled one separately which i do plan on doing because i actually also enjoyed the untitled album all right but that's that all right Next up, i shown before, we have Nick Cave and the Bad Seed, Let Love In. <clears throat> Sorry, my throat is just all over the place right now. So yeah, I've said it before, but I have one other Nick, Nick Cave album, and I enjoyed it. More piano-driven. This one's a lot more rocking. Definitely has a, lot, has a more alternative, kind of gothic rock sound, which I, which I enjoy. And yeah, I think I prefer this one over the, the one I have. Uh, the Boatman's Call is what I was, I'm was i referring to. Um, but yeah, it's a good, kind of dark sounding. And Nick Drake's, <laughs> Nick Cave's vocals are a lot more grittier, more darker sounding, which I, which again, I love that sound. Uh, Do You Love Me is great. Uh, Nobody's Baby Now, which is kind of a ballad al almost, if you can call it that. Um, but yeah, it's a great song. Uh, Jangling Jack, um, I Let Love In, Baby Me Now. Uh, yeah, very good album. Nice, 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 nice. Okay, next we have Day, Diamond Life. And I mentioned in the uh, record store finds video I did earlier this month was that I got this because I I heard Smooth Operator um, and I really enjoyed that that song and so lo and behold at the record store I found it so here it is uh, but yeah great stuff I again I really enjoyed this album again kind of jazzy kind of a jazz pop album uh, but yeah I really like her vocals. Um, very nice. Uh, I already mentioned Smooth Operator, but Your Love is King is great. Uh, Frankie's First Affair. Uh, you have Cherry Pie, I Will Be Your Friend. Just to name a couple songs. But yeah, very solid stuff. Now, the next one, probably the most, uh, I guess you could say maybe the most, the biggest outlier in this cat, in this whole, in this haul. So I bought my very first rap slash hip hop album. And that is the Fugees with the score. I don't know what made me want to get it. I guess it's kind of like, you know, maybe let's start giving hip hop its due. Maybe it's time I change my, uh, I wouldn't say prejudice, but you know, kind of avoiding it for a while. And yeah, I bought it. And you know what? I actually kind of liked it. 
I know, surprising, huh? But yeah, I mean, I've, I've never, I've never hated hip hop or rap. I never said it's the worst genre ever. Um, but yeah, it's. I think this one was a nice little starter album, I must say. Um, so of course you have Lauren Hill, who is the female, and I forgot the other two, honestly. Um, but I think. The three of them do have some great stuff. Uh, obviously, Laura, Lauren Hill is probably has the best voice. Um, but yeah, she, she's a standout. A lot of good rhythms. Good. There's some sampling, of course, which is a trademark of hip hop. Um, but yeah, they do some great stuff in there. Um, but yeah, it's like just a good, just head bopper album. Um, I actually, so yeah, overall, I really enjoyed this. This was very good. Uh, so yeah, that's. Fuji's with the score. Probably the great surprise in this haul. Well, one of the great surprises in this haul. Alright, after that, I unbox this one, and we have some J-pop. We have... Oh god, I forgot. I was supposed to look up how to pronounce it. If I remember correctly, it is pronounced Mickey and Mai. So, here it is. So, this is a compilation. Um, you have two compilations in one. So you have Ivory, which is the first one. Then you have Ivory 2, which was a second compilation. But I guess they decided to just combine the two into one. So yeah, so usually in this case, I count it as two albums. So it gets, it, so both of them are included in the counter. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I just want to get more different artists because I have Maria Takeuchi, of course, and I've talked a lot about her, but I want to start going more, talking more about uh, different J-pop artists. And I discovered this person on, discovered Amai on Spotify, and I enjoyed what I've heard. And I decided to go for this one because this is like a good uh, compilation. In total, there's like 30 songs on here, so there's tons. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, I will say her music is not as immediate as Maria Tuki as, as Maria Tukiyochi. Um Definitely a lot more mellow, a lot more laid back type of pop music. Um, but overall, still really enjoyed it. I like her vocals. Um, but yeah, I like it. Very good stuff. Okay, and then we have 10,000 Maniacs, Our Time in Eden, which I've shown. Um, very solid stuff. Again, I've always liked uh, Natalie Merchant is the lead singer, I believe. Um, I always liked her vocals. And the music's pretty solid, too. I wouldn't say it's my favorite of this haul, but it has some pretty good songs in here. Okay, Michael, Jack Michael Jackson with History. One of the 90s albums. And it's kind of a greatest hits as well um, so disc one is the greatest hits disc two is the actual album um, I'm just gonna talk about the album itself and the album is actually is pretty it's okay it's uh, there's some there's some nice songs like scream um, uh, earth song um, you're not alone um, yeah it's a it's fine but there's just not as many memorable songs on here in my opinion it's just kind of average you know that's just me all right after that let's keep on moving we have a few Grays hits here and i've shown these before so first up we have bill withers and this is a great compilation a lot of great songs yeah it goes without saying this was a great uh little introduction into bill withers i knew some songs before like lean on me ain't no sunshine um um, the collaboration with 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 Grover Washington Jr. with just the two of us, which is fantastic. It's probably my favorite song on here. Um, but yeah, there's all the other songs in here are very good, and Bill Withers always had a great voice. Um, but yeah, great compilation. And here we have Aretha Franklin with 30 greatest hits. Uh, yeah, I mean. If you want to get Aretha Franklin, this is a good starter, I must say. It has a lot of the big songs like Respect, um, You Make Me Feel Like a Natural Woman, uh, Think, uh, Rock Steady. She has a couple covers on here as well, like her cover of Bridge Over Troubled Water is pretty good. Um, she even does a cover of Eleanor Rigby, which is pretty interesting. So yeah, some more great stuff. 
And the last of this section, shall we say, of albums I've shown, um, I unboxed this one in a video. And that is Disc 1, uh, 1991 to 2001 with Bare Naked Ladies. So, I mentioned before I had no idea who they were, but you know, a few people have recommended them to me. And I decided to get this one. Um, uh, so yeah, overall, but first impressions, pretty good. I quite like this, this their sound. Again, it's kind of like your good old 90s uh, alternative rock sort of band. Um, the one thing that kind of threw me off a little bit was um, when I looked on Wikipedia, um, one of the genres they were labeled as is geek rock, um, which I was like, what the heck is geek rock? But then when I heard the lyrics, I'm like, okay, I can kind of see why because in one of the songs, I can't remember which song it was, but they name dropped Sailor Moon, which definitely was like, well, I didn't, well, I wasn't expecting Sailor, a Sailor Moon reference in the song especially from this type of band um but yeah they're kind of they're just kind of goofy i don't i mean i could tell they don't take themselves that seriously i mean the name alone should tell you they don't take themselves that seriously which tells you which tells a lot but yeah overall very enjoyable i quite like going here one thing i want to point out though was that there when i was doing i was i did a little research like i said i looked on wikipedia and one of the members is named stephen page and i saw the name and i was like why does that sound familiar well the reason is because i have heard his voice before and probably in the most unlikely place you would ever think so i'm going to show Kate, show it right now so i'll be right back let me go off screen let me pick it up i got it so, I first heard Stephen Page's voice without knowing in this, and that is the Thomas and the Magic Railroad soundtrack. So, and that, and the reason is, is because he's actually featured on one of the songs on here. It's actually he's actually on the first track, which you can see there. You can see his name. He sung in the in the movie version of "He's a Really Useful Engine," which I'll play a little clip right now. And if you didn't hear him properly, here's a version where he is isolated. He's a really useful engine, you know. All the other engines, they'll tell you so. Don't you just love when I make connections to Thomas the Tank Engine? You know you do. Anyhow, so overall, <laughs> solid stuff. Very good. I liked it. If there's any albums in particular I should check out, let me know. Alright, so now we're done with all the albums that I've shown before. Now the rest is a bunch of stuff that I have not shown before, so this will be a lot good surprise for all of you. So, the first up, and they're not really, I guess they're kind of in an order, um, they're kind of by last name. Um, we have Mariah Carey with Emotions. So I have one other Mariah Carey album up there, um, Daydream is called, so yeah, I thought why not get in another one, and yeah. Good old 90s R&B pop music. Not much to say here. It's just like, you know, Mariah Carey's Mariah Carey. She's known for her whistle register, which she does a lot on this album. I don't think she does it as much on Daydream, but here it's like all over the place, which some people might find it annoying. I don't mind it. I kind of liked it. So yeah, very good. Very good. Next, we have Cheap Trick with In Color. This is their second studio album and it has some pretty well-known songs like Hello There. Um, it has the original I Want You to Want Me, which is very different from the Budokan version, which most people are familiar with. Um, but still, this version is actually not too bad. I don't mind it. Um, you're all, you're all talks pretty good. Southern Girls, Come On, Come On, Big Eyes. Yeah, just to name a few. But yeah, great album. Good rock album. All right, next, we have some more progressive rock, and I guess this could fall in a bit of jazz rock as well. We have Coliseum with Valentine's Sweets. Saw this in a Canadian Stud Muffin video, and I was like, this seems pretty good. I might, I'll pick this up. So, 
What's interesting about this particular issue is that it it has two discs. Disc one is the Valentine's Suite, but as you see in the back, disc two is another album called The Grass is Greener, which is a American version of Valentine's Suite. Um, the big difference is, is that um, it has some of the same songs, but also includes a lot of di different songs as well. It's very confusing, uh, but I'll leave it, 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 this booklet even has the what the uh, album looked like. So, so again, here is this is Valentine's Sweet, and here's the album cover for The Grass Is Greener. That's it. It's literally just the same thing. Only it, the colors are a bit muted, and it says grass is greener there. Yeah, very original. Uh, and so, I don't know. They're kind of listed as two separate albums, so that's what I, so that's what I'm gonna do. They're kind of separate albums in in my eyes. So you, you get two albums in one. Uh, so talk about disc one. Disc one's from is by far my favorite of the two. Um, just some great musicianship all around. You know, the vocals aren't the greatest I've heard, but you know, they fit the sound, I guess. Um, there's only five tracks and also has a bonus track as well, which is pretty all right. Um, the Kettle, uh, um, Elegy, uh, uh, the title track, which is the 60 minute, 60 minute epic. It's kind of an instrumental track mainly, but the musicianship is great. Um, so yeah, love, love the first disc. Um, uh, the grass is greener, you know. Again, not as good, not as epic as the Valentine's Suite, of course. But you know, there's the ori the the original songs that are on that are on here are pretty. I like them, like "Jumping Off the Sun," um, "Lost Lost Lost Angeles." Good play on words there. Um, let's see, uh, I'm trying to see what else is original. Um, Barlow Barlow Row, something like that. <laughs> but yeah really good if you love like early like er, like late 60s because valentine's suite was 69 and grass screen was 1970 so if you, if you like late 60s early 70s like progressive rock uh jazz rock this is definitely a must listen go check this out okay next we have sam cooks with night with night beat so yeah i wanted to get some sam cook in the collection because of course he's a great singer and yeah very enjoyable album um one thing though if you ever get this particular cd uh beware um because the first three songs are out of order uh i have no idea why uh, but if you see this cd copy just just keep in mind that um i would say maybe get a better copy um but you know i can i mean i've put this on my iTunes account so I can rearrange the the order when I want to um, but if you don't if you don't do iTunes then if it's probably not going to give you the most authentic listening experience so again keep that in mind but the songs are in there are good still all right I was very lucky to find this at the record store and I was able to find another Doors album and that is LA Woman so this is the last album with Jim Morrison on lead vocals and great album for him to go out on. I mean, you have the so many great songs like the challenging, challenge, the, the changeling, sorry, and love her madly, the title track. And of course you have writers on the storm, which is fantastic. The baseline alone. And before people correct me, the doors, uh, the doors don't have a, the doors don't have a bass player. Get your facts right. Well, you are right. Live, they do have a bass play. They don't. They don't have a bass player when they play live, but in the studio, they had some session bass players. Let me prove it to you. And see, this is right there. Jerry Chef on bass. There. I don't know. That always annoys me when people try to correct me on those little things. Well, I'm one step ahead. Anyhow, moving on. Great album. All right, next up, here's a very classic album here. We have Marvin Gaye, What's Going On? So finally was able to get this album. Um, not too long ago, me, Jason, uh, Garrett, and Nick did a whole like 
six hour live stream talking about the essential albums of the 1970s and that's on Jason's channel I might actually link that live stream in the description but again six hours so have a, have some snacks while you watch that uh but yeah and one of the albums that didn't get mentioned that I I think should have been in there um and a lot of people would have agreed and that is this album um uh yeah and I wanted to get it just to kind of finally sit down and listen to it and yeah I can understand why this has a lot this has a lot of critical critical acclaim um just not only his vocals are spectacular but the songs kind of the songs pretty much blend into each other um which is just just get a great listening experience and great R&B the great bass playing by James Jamerson of course um but yeah it's just like a good almost timeless type of album where you can probably put this on now you could probably still relate it's probably still um, could connect even today um is this the greatest album ever made according to rolling stone debatable i'm not gonna get into that but uh, but yeah i can see why i can see why this is this is as critical acclaim as it is so yeah great album all right, after that, let's go on to something crap. We have Lady Antebellum. I got this because I'll get to, I'll get more into it later, but I raided my mom's CD collection one one night um cuz you know, she doesn't listen to the CDs much her CDs much anyway, so might as well see if there's anything good. And I the only reason I pulled this was because I actually like the title track Need You Now. Um because uh because i you know I, I think it's a good pop song and uh i decided to check out the rest of the album and uh yeah there's really not much to say I, the rest is very generic sounding um it's just not that like literally the, the 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 big hit on here is the best song by a long shot like none of the other songs can compete with it uh but you know it's here might as well keep it oh well <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's all I gotta say about this. It's, it goes without saying, this is probably the worst CD in this whole haul. Worst album, I should say. Alright, up next we have Pat Metheny. Of course, Pat Metheny, great jazz guitarist. And here, this was like a buck, so I decided to get it. Um, Secret Story. This is a long album, by the way. So again, jazz, a lot of jazz, takes a lot of world influence in here. And you know, I... I have a feeling there's a lot there's some Pat Metheny fans out there who are gonna say this is probably not the best album to start with and I might agree with that I did still enjoy it but I feel like there he's had better stuff out there so if you're a Pat Metheny fan please let me know if there is a if there's a good a much better album to start with because you know I again I enjoy what I heard but I feel like he has more to offer okay now this one I was very lucky to find this one because this album is very rare, um, especially on vinyl. Uh, so, I'm not sure how many people know about this. If you do know this album, that you are a good person. Uh, but we have Billy Nichols, and this is his album, Would You Believe? And I, again, shout out to my, my good buddy Nick. And Nick had, and I did a live stream with, with Nick, Garrett, and myself. It was on Garrett's channel, and we were. And at some point, I think, at some point, we we brought up our Nick brought up his what were his top ten albums, and this album was in his top ten. And basically, what this was supposed to be, this was supposed to be, I guess, Brit England's answer to Pet Sounds, because uh, this was produced by Andrew Olden, who was the Rolling Stones manager, uh, and he wanted to. Let's make an album that would compete with Pet Sounds because Pet Sounds did pretty well in the UK, um, and so yeah, hired got Billy Nichols to write a lot of the songs on here and sing, and this is what you get. And yeah, it's quite an interesting album. Um, is it? Is does it to me? Well, I will say it. It does not compete with Pet Sounds. I mean, nothing can top Pet Sounds in my opinion. But this is pretty good. Um, definitely, you definitely hear the influence. Of pet sounds on here, a lot of a lot of intricate production techniques that are utilized here. Um, but yes, 
great songs and a lot of the a lot of the small faces the band the small faces were featured on here um you have would you believe which is good come again life is sure daytime girl uh probably my favorite song on here is uh girl from new york that's a heavy track and uh, steve marriott is just going to town on guitar on that track um london social degree is pretty good too so yeah this is a pretty enjoyable album um one and the reason why i say this is one of the uh, and i said it earlier it's a rare album because when it they planned this to be widespread but something happened i can't remember exactly what happened but um they only a hundred uh promo copies were were put out and the album ended up getting shelved so if you want to get an original 60s pressing of this album you you would have to pay like thousands of dollars just to get it and they would eventually release it on a cd um but even this, this cd copy which i have here can get pretty rare is pretty rare as well and it could get pretty pricey i was very fortunate to find one for a good price uh so yeah if you can f get your hands on this go ahead uh you're probably better off with a cd though um uh, but yeah if you find a good good price for this go ahead check it out you might be surprised and you could probably if you probably can you could probably listen to this on youtube but yeah great discovery thank you nick all right next up we have ted nugent so i got free for all a while ago and i enjoyed that one so i decided to get his debut album and again it was for a dollar so forget it while i can and yeah very good i mean great guitar work all around um great memorable songs like of course stranglehold uh stormtrooping uh hey baby uh where have you been all my life i mean you know lyrically it's kind of not the most <laughs> deepest stuff but the music is very hard rocking and very good so yeah awesome stuff okay this next one is dedicated to mike from did you see that because Mike actually recommended me an album and Mike's a movie guy so when he recommends you an album you're like okay this should be I'm kind of interested now so this band is called one okay rock and this one is called eye of the storm so I actually I, I think I've heard of this band somewhere and I was thinking to myself where did I heard where have I heard this because I looked up the lead singer and I was like that looks familiar and the reason is because a while ago I watched this video of the lead singer doing a collaboration with Arnel Pineda who is the current lead singer of Journey and they did a video where they did a duets of covering open arms so yeah that's the first time I've I've heard of the lead singer without even knowing it so I don't know a whole lot about this band but I one I've heard they started out as kind of like a, your typical alternative sort of rock um, when they get to this album, they decide to go in a more electronic sound, um, kind of an electro electronic rock, electronic pop sort of sound. Um, and I quite like this one. But if it goes, I should probably mention they're they're a Japanese band, so I was like, always good to have more Japanese artists in my collection. Um, so this is an album I can't, I wouldn't say I would recommend to everybody. So again, if you're not into electronic rock or pop sort of with a lot of modern production you're probably not going to like this but if you're me who actually doesn't mind that stuff you, you'll you'll enjoy this one and i did enjoy this one quite a bit um might check out more so maybe check out some of the early stuff maybe 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 that'll be that'll be kind of interesting to look into but yeah very good good recommendation mike okay we're almost done just a few more to go let me just see, see how long we've been recording about, oh well about half an hour already jeez okay next up we have a great another greatest hits we have paul revere and the raiders and this is probably their most their first greatest hits compilation from the 60s of course a reissue reissue here so i've heard i've definitely heard knew of this band um they've definitely had a lot of hits in the 60s and i thought you know why not and overall solid stuff this is probably they're not one of my favorite 60s bands um but you know they're kind of there's some enjoyable songs like louie louie uh stepping out uh, just like me uh, uh let's see good thing 
and this has some bonus tracks and you have a ver they do a version of you're not my stepping stone which is of course famous from the monkeys which is kind of interesting all right so yeah solid 60s pop again not my favorite not my favorite though all right now here was a good find so i found sparks we have angst in my pants now you have the two uh, uh two male brothers and dressed up shall we say uh but yeah always wanted to get more sparks but it's always kind of tricky because a lot of their albums are pretty expensive to get and i was able to find this at the record store and yeah this is another great album this is one of their 80s 80s albums this was 82 and yeah you have the title track which i've i've listened to listened to before and that's a great song same with i predict um you have sherlock holmes uh nicotina mickey mouse uh, instant weight loss is fantastic um the, cl the decline and fall of me <laughs> just great witty sort of songs very quirky um but very sparks so yeah one i very enjoyed all right i kind of referenced her earlier in this video but yeah i i got another maria sakiochi album uh i'm almost there i only need two more of her studio albums to complete her discography um so yeah i'm almost there so again ranking video coming soon uh but yeah this is one that came out in in 2001 i think so this is so kind of shifting into the 2000s um very solid album um again this one's not as immediate as her previous albums if i were to rank them now this would kind of be more towards more towards the bottom um but again i have not hated any one of her albums i've enjoyed all of them uh but this this, def this definitely has a lot of the songs that I, I guess they still need to grow on me maybe uh, I definitely need to re-listen to this one again um, but yeah I enjoyed a lot of the songs on here um, very solid stuff good old uh, pop you know J-pop city pop whatever you want to call it enjoyable stuff all right and these next two are by the same I guess band you should say because it's kind of a band it's kind of a kind of a solo artist uh, but we have more Charday, and these two I did raise from my mom's CD collection that I talked about earlier, because uh, she has she had Promise, and she had Stronger Than Pride. So of these two, I think this is by far the better album. This one is a little bit not is not as um, not as immediate. I, I wouldn't say it's boring, but definitely not as many memorable songs this one definitely had a lot had a good had a lot of good songs on here um it's a is it a crime uh, my sweetest the sweetest taboo uh mr wrong punch drunk uh fear um but yeah this is a great album uh this one eh, I'm not sure yet all right rest in peace to this artist we lost her a couple months ago and that's tina turner and I wanted to get this one. We have Private Dancer. This was her comeback album because uh, she released a couple albums after leaving Ike, but those two albums didn't do that well. But this one did really well. I mean, you have big hits like What's Love Got to Do With It, which is a massive hit. Um, love that song. So that's one of the reasons why I wanted to get it. But the rest of the album is so good as well. I might have been Queen. Um, Private Dancer is a terrific song. Love that one. Um, you have uh, Steel Claw. Uh, Let's stay together. Better be good to me is a, another one of our great one of the great singles on here. Um, show me some respect. Um, but yeah, great eighties uh, kind of pop pop rock um, R and B a little bit as well. Um, yeah. Rest in peace to Tina Turner, the, the queen of rock. All right, and then we have one more album to go, and we have Van Halen with Diver Down, which I, I think as of now, I now have all of the classic David Lee Roth albums. You know, I don't have all the David Lee Roth albums. There's one, there's that one album from 2010, I believe. Um, so maybe I'll get that at some point, but I'm not in a rush. Uh, but yeah, I have pretty much all, I have all the classic David Lee Roth albums and 
very solid album very good stuff there's a lot more instrumentals on here which i'm kind of mixed on but you know that said still some great songs on here like where have all the good times gone um hang em up um yeah the cover of Op a pretty woman by roy roy or orbison is pretty good uh let's see the full bugs is kind of nice big bad bill um uh, but yeah solid album very good and there you have it that is 43 albums i have acquired in the cd hall so with all that said what is my count what is my how many albums do i have in total let's look at the counter oh whoa we are pretty close we are two albums away so i guess it goes without saying that it's confirmed that in september will be a good milestone in this channel's history so what album will become the 1000th album possibilities are endless so i'll leave it at that though but overall thank you very much for watching this hopefully this was a good return um if you enjoyed this then please give this video a like subscribe to the channel if you are new of course in the comments let me know what was some of your favorites out of this batch here um and yeah, other than that, I'll see you in the next video. So take care and goodbye for now.